and you just really just dawns on you and you, and you just you just why me kind of thing and and, and how just how lucky uh, I was um Uh, it was at the beginning of December, uh, the 4th of December in 2002, and um, I was at work at school, and I got a call to come and get Nick, um, he wasn't very well. So I remember being in the lunch hall um, uh, in school and just just feeling so cold, and then I remember people telling me how blue my lips were, and just really not eating and just feeling just just shivering. He was a colour that I'd never seen before or since in, in him, or actually another child. Very, very grey, particularly above his lips. Um, and very pale, just, just a pale that you wouldn't, yeah, I've not seen before. He was very lethargic, which was a concern because he was a very lively child. And, and, and very quickly he um, began to have a fever. And he also had um, um, a, a a convulsion. Um, there was a big campaign at the time um, uh, about meningitis and um, there was lots of adverts and uh, lots of posters and, and, and interviews that he'd done which said that if, if, if anyone's worried about the light or if the rash came this could be a sign of meningitis. Then I noticed he had just one spot on his tummy. It wasn't a raised bump, it was just like a, a, red, a red mark, that's all it was. I wished we called the ambulance. I really wish we called the ambulance because when we got to the hospital, we were triaged and I said, I thought he had meningitis. And it, because it was so high profile in 2002, I think everybody with a slight cold or something was going in and saying it was meningitis. Um, and so unfortunately they left us in the waiting room for half an hour waiting for a doctor to be, to be seen. And in that time, he's, he, he started to get rashes. Um, I could see the rash was coming up from his tummy and over the top of his chest. Um, we got into the cubicle, we were very, very concerned. And as soon as the doctors saw him, I, I couldn't believe it. He's, he was completely covered in this like red motley rash all over his body. And that was very frightening for us all. You know, I was at a young age, so I wasn't, you don't know the, the gravity of what's going on or anything, but you just, I remember those two memories of feeling so hot, but also cold at the same time and then throwing up and, and things like that. And then after that, it's all going to going into hospital. Then it becomes um, it's all just a, like a, that, that. I don't know. It's all a blur, really. They prepared my husband and myself that they said this was extremely serious. And um, they actually said that if they couldn't get it sorted, they actually said that he might. Um, die. I was running out of things to say and obviously getting quite panicky um, and um, I mentioned chocolate which is at that time quite a favourite of his and he literally sat bolt upright in bed and he said well I want the biggest bar and that was it and that from then on he just I mean I won't say it was plain sailing but he he got better and better as the time went on but they were just about to airlift him to Great Ormond Street and when you're going through all of this you don't understand what the next steps could be and we just you just live it you live it really and it's only on reflection when you look back that you see um, how serious the situation was and what the outcome could have been. It did affect him, I, I, it did affect him and it was a concern. Um, I mean, he was still, he was still the lively Nick that everyone knew and knows and, uh, you know, he got back to playing rugby pretty quickly and that was one of the great things for him. He had an outlet um, to help him. It's really hard because you, you feel, I feel unbelievably lucky thinking about it when you hear those statistics. And I also feel, I almost feel guilty as well at the same time because 
how have I got away with uh, being okay as much as I am, not losing any limbs? And like I said, going to secondary school, um, seeing a girl who had the exact same thing, missing both her, her hands and um, quite far up to the forearm. And you just really just dawns on you and you, and you just, you just, why me kind of thing. And, and, and how, just how lucky uh, I was. And I, I do feel this sense of, I, it's, I don't know why, I just feel the sense of, of guilt and that I feel that if I don't do something with my life like that, and if I don't give back or live true to who I, what I should be doing, then it's wasted, you know? Um, I think you do know when your child's really ill. I do think that. Um, I think it might be harder in teenagers. I had no clue it, it affected young teenagers and stuff like that. And, and how important is that if we can get the message out for them to then realise and and hopefully, like like Mum says, spot it earlier and then be decisive in it because that is really what we're talking about here. We're talking about time. We should have rang the ambulance because then we would have gone straight into... Um, a and e and not have to wait so i think you've just it, you've got to go with your gut instinct and i i think nowadays it's ringing 111 really and and, and really it's and not giving up you know you might get that answer because i obviously i went to the gp um but you know yourself i think you know yourself and i there's no way i could have gone to bed that night with nick in another room and not have done something about it